Hey guys, it's Lost5 here with season number three of the Crystal Palace career mode. We're getting straight in to the action. Now this is actually the end of season number two. Before we switched over officially into the new season, we went and picked up Javi Simmons from PSV. I thought with the kind of Champions League coming in, maybe a change of formation, maybe some new backup. This man can play on the right, he can play up top, he can play at cam, in centre mid a little bit deeper. He is the proper versatile, he's still very young, only 21 and he's a very very good overall for that age. So I thought picking him up and we got him at a relatively cheap price as well was a really really good piece of business. And when we look, taking his medical here, um, yeah so we're getting him in, rotation maybe, unless we change to the 4-2-3-1 which I did plan on doing, but I think because the 4-3-3 has been so successful. Um, these past few seasons, I think we stick with that until it starts to do us wrong. Because right now, the wingers are scoring goals. Even the centre mids are getting their goals as well. So if we just keep adding quality players to this system that we've already built, we will surely start winning more games, conceding less goals, scoring more goals, and winning more trophies. That's that's the plan I've got right now. But we had a lot of money to spend because we qualified for Champions League in the previous episode. We had to bulk out the rotational players and we had to improve on some of the first team players. So the first thing we did was sign a backup for Tyreek Mitchell, a left back coming in for free. Ian Mattison, another former Chelsea player, another Cob Cobham graduate, a ring as always for all free transfers. Picked him up on some relatively cheap wages. 75 overall left back. Still relatively young as well. I think is a good, good piece of business. Now, the first piece of transfer news, transfer negotiations on the selling side. Liverpool came in for Juan Bissaka. 84 overall, 26 years of age. We gave him a new contract not too long ago. But we want to keep this career mode as realistic as possible. And that involved us selling him for 50 million to Liverpool. They must be looking to either replace Trent or find a bit of backup for Trent. But obviously they finished above us. It's more likely that they are going to win more trophies than us. They beat us in the FA Cup final. And Juan Bissaka goes and joins them. So that means we need a new right back. So we went for the 23 year old Jeremy Frimpong. He's moved on in this save from Leverkusen to Monaco. We've got Champions League football, we're playing in the Premier League, we have an open right back spot. He is guaranteed to get first team football. What is there that he he would he would reject? So basically we try to kind of even out the money we get from Wan Basaka to the money we pay for Frimpong. A couple of add-ons here and there and we kind of are paying just a little bit more than what we are going to get for Wan Basaka but Overall, I think the deal is very good. They're the same overall, and Jeremy Frimpong is a few years younger, which, you know, maybe we got the better end of the deal there. Maybe Liverpool should have went for Jeremy Frimpong, but this does mean maybe a change in the way we play. Maybe we go with a bit more attacking wing-backs. Obviously, with Juan Basaka and Tariq Mitchell, that's two world-class defensive wing-backs. Going forward on the other side, not quite so good. So maybe with the signing of Jeremy Frimpong, we go a bit more attacking with our left and our right-back. And we try and see how they can influence the game. Um, but yeah, number 18, he's not going to be wearing that. He's going to change his number or all that. But I said last season, Edward will probably be sold. No offers have come in for him yet, but we are still waiting on him. I have transfer listed him. So what we're going to do, I searched the free agents tab for some strikers. And a 35-year-old, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, another former <laughs> Chelsea player, has been released. And we picked him on a free one-year we just wait until Anthony Martial recovers from his injury. As soon as he's injury free, straight back into the first team. I will probably look to sign another striker, maybe a younger striker, to come in and be backup. Well, backup, backup, because in the reserve team we play two strikers. An offer did come in for Odson Edouard, and that was for, uh, for sorry from Unai Emery's Villarreal. Now they had a lot of good players, and I, I spotted one. As I was searching through the player swaps, but I knew the deal would be unrealistic. 
So what I wanted to do, I didn't want to just flat out reject the deal. I just wanted to get it so they walked away. And I would come straight back to them with a £50 million offer plus... Well, sorry, not... 50, I was kind of dilly dally and I didn't know what to do, but they wanted Edward. So, of course, they're still going to want him. So if we offer them Edward plus a bit of cash, 75 million to be exact, taking it over about that 100 million pound mark, all things considered, we give them a player they want, we get a player we want. 87 rated for Kyo Tomori. He shouldn't be playing for Villarreal. We're taking him back to London. We're giving him Champions League football. We're making him the highest paid player in the team by quite a lot. By a considerable amount, actually. And, I mean, that's what the highest rated player in the team deserves. So, yes. We have signed for Kayo Tomori, another former Chelsea player. I, I've actually just kind of noticed how many former Cobham graduates or Chelsea players we actually have signed. But, obviously, he moved from Milan to Villarreal in this save. Went up a couple of overalls. Maybe kind of exceeded where Villarreal were in there as a team. So we go in, we snap him up, we give them Edward, who they wanted, and we pick up a very, very good young English centre-back to partner up with Mark Gerhi at the back. And this is going to be a good season, but we kick it off with probably the hardest game possible. City at the Etihad. And it, it, it doesn't get harder than that. It does not get harder than Manchester City. In their own stadium. The former champions from last season. But we are lining up in that 4-2-3-1. I just wanted to give it a test. Uh, here today. Just to see how it kind of worked out. With the two CDMs. Would we be able to get the centre mids as attacking as possible. Does the cam get involved in the game as much. What about the left and right mid. They're pushed back slightly to where they are in the 4-3-3. And well two minutes into the game. Odson Edwards starts his season off how he ended the previous one. He goes and gets a goal. He gritties at the Etihad. Turns their stadium into his dance floor once again. But it is an assist for Javi Simmons. First game, first assist. And that's not too bad. But yeah, Edouard is gone. Aubameyang now starts up top. Till Martial gets back. We'll probably look to sign a new centre... A, a centre forward striker, whatever. And I'm also going to look to maybe sign a new CDM. A top, top CDM. Um, after all the signings we've made so far, I've got about 30 million left. So maybe what I'll do is look at some pre-contract deals. Obviously, when, when they've got 11 months left on their contract, you can get them for cheaper. So maybe we'll look at that, see who we could find. If not, maybe we'll go for a youngster with a lot of potential. Obviously, we have the draw of Champions League now on our side to help us draw in these big names. But it's still 1-0 here against City. A couple of chances are coming their way. A very, very good save from Dean Henderson. Does deny Haaland of his first goal of the season. And yeah, it's kind of the same old City though. A lot of attack down the wing. Trying to find Haaland. Through ball. Not quite working out. See there. Blocks the De Bruyne pass. Mahrez though picks it up. Finds it right back to him. The through ball through to Erling Haaland. He just tried to play it across. It's that get to the byline. And try and put it in. But eventually it did find the back of the net. Eventually Haaland did score. A bit of defensive kind of mistakes. You might say... Not the way you really want to be starting the season. It was an own goal from Mark Gerhi. Was there really... You know, I can't... It's FIFA, man. Sometimes things happen on FIFA that you can't really do anything about. And that was probably one of them, you know. But we make our way into the second half. And an early corner for City. They keep hold of possession when we get our head to it first. It falls to Foden. In the box, lays it off to Pedri. Finds eventually its way back to Phil Foden. A four minutes into the second half the game flips on its head thanks to Phil Foden and that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes because because that's City that is City that is City in a nutshell nutshell but we look to have a chance coming our way and that's exactly what happens Alexander Fletcher gets us back on level terms pretty soon after just the 60th minute, so there's a full half an hour now for us to try and get back into this one. He is definitely one to keep an eye on this season. He's already an 81 overall. He's moved back to a centre mid position, but obviously, as I said, if we do switch back to the 4-3-3, which I think is very likely because this is creating a lot of holes, 
As we can see, three minutes after getting back on level terms through Alexander Isak, who was signed for them. He was bane of our life at Newcastle. Now he's doing the same at City. But yeah, I think we're going to switch back to the 4-3-3. Fletcher's going to go back to that centre mid position. He'll probably play alongside Javi Simmons in that area. And then we'll look to get a new CDM. We will have hudson Adoy or Eze. Then we'll have Martial. Then we'll have Olise. And I think it's a pretty good team. But for right now, we're 3-2 down against City. We've gone all out attack. We've tried to push everyone up the field. We're pressing them high. Trying to just win the ball back as quickly as possible. That's leaving gaps. And Akuna in the box. Lays it across to Isak. Who goes and scores a brace against us for City this time. Last time he did score the brace against us, it was for Newcastle. Now he's done it for the other money club in Manchester City. But that's not really the way we want to start the season. But it does mean that the City away trip is out of the way. The first game of the season, the Etihad trip is out of the way. So now we can focus on the rest of the season. And the only other game that maybe we have to be a bit nervous for is the Liverpool trip at Anfield. Other than that, everything else is clean sailing for us. I, I, I don't know. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. If you have, please like, subscribe, and peace.